Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're gonna to be working in the berry beds. We're gonna be prepping potatoes for planting and then possibly planting some lilacs. So here we are, and you guys, they broke ground on the house right across the fence there uh, a couple days ago. So there's gonna be a lot of activity over there this summer. Okay, so blackberry beds first. We recently planted blackberries, like, oh, maybe a few weeks ago. Four of the blackberries that we planted were the Primark 45s that I had tried to winter over just in nursery containers back behind our greenhouse. You can see our irrigation system is working, that's great but you can also see that they never broke dormancy. So we were unsuccessful in our attempt. And the other four that we planted, they pretty much look like this when we put them in the ground. These weren't quite as far along. These have put on more leaves. All four of those I picked up down at the garden center. They're grown in a more mild part of our state and then shipped in, of course, to the garden center where I picked them up. So they were already leafed out and miles ahead of our berries here waking up on our schedule. So that's why even though the Primarchs weren't really showing signs of, of growth yet, I still wanted to give them a chance because I thought, well, they still had a little flex in their branches and a little bit of green, but they just never did anything. So I picked up two new varieties of blackberry plants, two of each, so four total. And then we're also gonna dig some fall gold raspberry starts that came out from underneath the bed, and we're gonna plant them back in the berry bed. So you guys know that I've had a hard time getting my hands on fall golds um, the past couple of years. So last year I planted three in here and you can see that they've done really well. I need to prune out a couple of the canes that never uh, did anything, but you can see that they have already thrown suckers outside of the bed, which is kind of perfect because I can dig these up and then just start filling in the bed. And between the suckers that my fall golds produce and the suckers that my parents' fall golds produce, because I'm gonna go dig some of those as well, probably not today, but later on, um, I'm hoping just to get the bed filled maybe this year. And here are the blackberries. So these two right here are Natchez blackberries. Don't those look so good? And the description got me. So sweet, well, let's see, produces large, sweet, glossy, black finished berries early in the season. Mm. And then these are Triple Crown Thornless, which are a really popular variety. High yield of large, sweet, juicy blackberries ripen mid-season. It'll be nice to have berries producing at different times of the season. And every time I read a blackberry description, some say that they're sweet and some say that they're sweet tart. And I'm going for just the sweet varieties. I want high sugar content berries. Planting will be easy. There's already Biotone where I planted the Primarchs. They're clearly not using it. So I'm just going to pop the old plant out put the new plant in and water them in. Easy peasy. Okay, got these planted. We'll water them in when I'm done with the raspberries, but I'm really happy as I was digging around in there. I think that water is just working perfectly. It was kind of the perfect amount of moisture around each one of those root balls. The nice thing about the varieties we put in today is that they will produce fruit the same, like they have the same growth cycle, I should say, as the other blackberries that we have planted in that they will produce canes the first year. And then the second year is when they will produce fruit on those canes. And then when we go into prune every single spring, all we do is we prune out the old fruit bearing canes because once they bear on those canes, they're done. Uh, so it'll be very straightforward. It's just like you would treat a, a June berry raspberry. Uh, as opposed to the Primark 45s, those would produce fruit on both first year and second year canes. So it'd be a little bit more, um, uh, not tedious, but it would take a little bit more time to prune them and you would prune them a little bit differently. So anyway, it'll be nice that it's very straightforward this time around. Okay, now we are going to address these fall golds. The first thing I'm going to do, that's why I have my Falcos in my hand, is I'm going to come in and just cut out these canes right here. So being an ever-bearing type, if you want to get two crops out of them, what you do is you leave last year's canes that uh, bore fruit at the very top and you just cut the tops off. So that's what I did. I just came through and just snipped off the tops of these branches because they will the second year produce fruit down lower and then on their new canes that they produce, they will produce fruit up top. So it's kind of a cycle. And I just wanted to see what would happen. On everbearing type, you can also just mow them all the way to the ground if you want and just have the second crop instead of have, trying to have an early one and a second one. And the benefit to mowing them all down and having just a big crop later on in the season is that you 
usually you give your plants more time and energy to produce bigger berries and maybe even more berries if you let them do that. But I kind of wanted to try the spring bearing and ever bearing like just to see what they would do this year. So I am trying to get the June crop and the fall crop. Now I went into way more detail about the pruning on raspberries if I've just completely confused you and I'm sorry if I if I did. But we'll link that video down below if you want a little bit more in-depth explanation and demonstration of how I pruned these. But now what we need to do is just go in and dig these out. So I'm just going to stick my shovel like right in between the board and the plant. So I'll just stick it right down in here. And what they do is they send out runners. So it's sent out a runner and it's just popping up here. So there's likely some roots attached to it. So I'm hoping that if we dig these up and start planting them right here, that we can just keep doing that in order to fill up this bed. Because honestly, I do love red raspberries, but fall golds are by far my favorite. The sugar content is higher. They are sweet. They just kind of melt in your mouth. They're so delicious. Mm. Should have brought my gloves out. These are thorny. That's the other thing. All the blackberry varieties that I planted are thornless, which is so nice. All the raspberries have a ton of thorns. Or I should say the ones that I planted have a ton of thorns. Oh yeah, I can see little roots right there. That's perfect. So we're just gonna come right over here. Ta-da, pretty easy. Okay, we're gonna keep going. Oh man, you know what though? Okay, so I topped the top off because it was too close, but I think we still have a good root system. Yeah, we do. That'll still produce. up and planted up here in the bed and we got one two three four five so that's a good start I mean we're not gonna really need that many more to fill this bed especially if these take and start spreading around too because I really could dig up some of these that have grown away from the middle section here and I could move those but you know I really just want the whole thing to fill up and so long as these stay nice and moist while they're getting going and we don't have any super cold nights we should be good we had a ton of new growth coming up from the roots this spring I mean just full lush beautiful and healthy um, because we had a really warm early spring and it was several weeks of temperatures in the high 30s and 40s at night and then we had a cold front come through where we had temperatures in the low to mid 20s where I covered some things but you can't cover your whole garden so a bunch of them got a little bit of frost damage on the top the roots are probably just fine because they're a little bit more established I don't want that happening to brand new freshly dug ones though like right in here perfect example all of this all of this was green, lush, beautiful. It's already coming back right here, but you can see it just was too tender to withstand the super cold that came through. I mean, this whole area, you really couldn't even see much soil. I mean, the whole thing. Oh yeah, see, like look down in here, look how thick it was coming in, like all over in here. And like I said, the roots are fine and they're shooting up new growth already, but that was a little bit of a bummer. Okay, now that that project is done, I'm gonna run to the root cellar, get our potatoes, and then we're gonna bring them out to the cut flower shed to get them all cut and let them dry overnight so that we can plant tomorrow. in the flower shed. We do have a table in here, but you can see that there are still building materials. So really the last thing that they are gonna need to do is work on the gable up front and the roof. And window hardware. I'm gonna have crank window hardware that will allow all the windows to open. So imagine that, like all these windows open and the doors open. There's gonna be so much light and air in here. I'm so excited about it. 
And then this right here is where a little heater will go. The heater was an afterthought. We decided since we went ahead with the insulation in here, it would be nice to take the edge off of the temperature should we decide to do um, some projects out here in the late fall or winter or early spring really. And we can just run it a little bit while we're out here working and then shut it off. I don't intend on keeping plants out here or anything like that that need warmer temperatures. I uh, will use the other structures for that. Uh, but while the walls were all open and the electricians were here, we just decided, you know what, we may as well just go ahead, even if we never use it. It's gonna add a couple hundred dollars to the co overall cost of the shed and it will give us a lot more flexibility to use this space. And this is officially our second project in the cut flower shed. Uh, we did the little wreaths that we put on the windows out here when the paper was still on the sides uh, for Christmas. Uh, that was really fun. But this, cutting potatoes, second project. And it makes total sense because we are planting the potatoes like just steps away from here. So we'll cut them here, let them dry, and then tomorrow, we will just step right on out here. This is where the potatoes are going this year. I'm gonna retool the water just a little bit. I think what I wanna do is plant the potatoes fairly thick, which means I might need to go get more um, than I actually brought home. I might do like three or four rows of drip, but put them a little closer together and just let them grow all together in a big, like a big wide row rather than splitting them up into two. But we plant four to six inches deep and Paul came out here and tilled 10 inches down uh, for us yesterday so that we could come out here and just easily pop the potatoes in the ground. That'll be so nice. Last year I used the auger and it was really easy. I just dug holes where I wanted the potatoes, but I do feel like having a, a looser planting bed as a whole, like not just the hole that the potato's going in, I feel like they'll have a little bit more elbow room to have their tubers um, form up a little bit bigger than they did last year because last year they were working through some hard pan. And this is what we're working with today. Red Pontiacs, German Butterballs, Huckleberry Golds, Yukon Golds, Russet Burbanks. Out of all five, Huckleberry Golds, definitely my favorite. I like to grow a lot of different varieties. I didn't get anything different than I've grown in the past couple of years though. And it might be that if I do need to go get more potatoes, I might have to do a different variety based on availability and what they have. If they have huckleberry golds and I need more, that's the one I will get more of. They've got a purple skin uh, with yellow inside that's really smooth. It's got a really good flavor, but not only that, they store the best for me. They store for a really long time. We're still using them. They've barely started to sprout while the other ones like have really long sprouts on them already. Um, and so I think every year though, I'm honing in on how much our family actually uses and how much I can give away. Uh, and it's a little bit of a process. I mean, our family has grown too a little bit and Samantha's not eating a ton yet, but you know, there will be a day where, you know, maybe I'll store a little bit more because we'll go through a little bit more. But at this point, I think this year, I know how much I need to store and I'll be able to give a lot more away, uh, which is always really fun. All right, so let's get into these bags. Okay, so right here we have a huckleberry gold. You can see that if we clean the outside of the potato, look at the color of that skin. Isn't that pretty? Oh, they're such pretty potatoes. Uh, but this is a great one because look at all the eyes. The eyes are growth points in your potato. And you can plant them whole if you want to, but you can also divide them, which is what we're gonna do, because as long as you have a couple of good strong eyes per section, you'll get a plant from each one of those. Okay, so what we wanna do is just take a look at the potato, determine where the eyes are. A lot of them are on this end. So what I'm gonna do probably is cut right down here in between these two eyes, right here. Oh, so pretty. So this piece right here has one, two, three, four, five eyes that are really nice and strong looking. So you can divide this further down. I probably will, would only do it one more time. Personally, I would just use this section right here. But if you wanted to make them stretch further, you could cut right here. So you've got two eyes here and then you've got the three eyes right there. So what we're gonna do is let these just sit out and dry, heal over overnight so that not, we're not planting just a raw potato in the ground because they could rot really easy. And then we plant them with the cut side down with the eyes facing up, and that's where they will grow from. And then they'll send out roots down below like that. Pretty interesting. Um, this piece right here, we've got an eye, an eye, and an eye. There's only three eyes, three, well, let's see. There's one right there. One, two, three, four. Hmm. Yep, I'm gonna do this. Okay, so there is one here, one here, and it's likely that it'll pop up another one. And then on this side, then, 
Well, we've just got the one, one right here. So anyway, probably should have left that one whole, but that's how you divide potatoes. Let's do one more. This is a little smaller. This one's pretty straightforward because we've got eyes all over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven eyes. We're just gonna take and cut it right down the center basically, almost. Um, so we're left with four eyes on the top. There's the cut end, cut end, and then we've got one, two, three eyes on that one. That's perfect right there. So depending on how much you cut your potatoes, a pound of seed potatoes will typically spread or uh, plant about a 10 to 12 foot row. Uh, if you tend to not split yours as much or cut them as much like I do, they won't stretch quite as far. Uh, but I'm gonna go through each one of these bags and just create a pile of each variety. I've got another table here I'll be setting them on uh, and then we'll just leave them here overnight. And then based on how many pieces I have, I'll be able to figure out how much of uh, this area I can fill and how many more I need to go get to fill the space. So I'm just gonna make my planting tags right now and that's what will indicate our piles here. These right here are pretty nice, you guys. They don't wear off as quickly as like a permanent marker. Alrighty, so with these Huckleberry Golds, I was able to get 36 individual pieces. Uh, we usually space them about eight to 12 inches apart. Out here where we have more space, I will go on the 12 inch side of things. In raised bed situations, I'll put them a little bit closer, but this will give us about 36 feet worth of potatoes right there. It's a lot. So I'm just gonna continue on with the next four varieties doing the exact same thing. And then in the end, I will be able to count up, get a grand total of how many potato pieces I have, which will tell me how many feet I need to have. I know I have 60 foot rows, so we'll be able to figure it out in the end. look so pretty sitting there. The prettiest is definitely the German Butterball. Look at that. Look at how beautiful and vibrant that yellow is. Then we've got the Russet Burbanks, which I have the fewest of, but I use the fewest of these actually in the kitchen. Red Pontiac, Yukon Golds right here, and then the Huckleberry Golds in this corner. And as I was going, I did make a count of how many pieces of each variety, which totaled 132, 132 feet, which turns out to be a little bit over two rows. So a row is 60 feet, two rows is 120 feet. Uh, I wanted to plant three or four rows together in the same location, so we are gonna need to go get more. Not quite double, but a, a few more. So I think we'll run down to the garden center really quick, just so that I can make sure I've got all the potatoes here, they're all cut and ready to go, and then we'll plant our lilacs. That'll do. Here is the new batch of potatoes I just went and picked up, all different varieties from the ones that we already prepped earlier on. So we've got Red Norland, which I've grown before. It's an early day potato. So it's the one we can harvest out probably first. So that'll be nice. I didn't really even think about that when I initially picked up those potatoes. Uh, this one is called Purple Viking. I've actually grown this one as well. Um, only one time and it's been a while. So I can't really remember. And I wasn't storing them or trying to store them for any length of time, like in a root cellar. So I don't know how they respond to that. And then this one is super interesting. I don't know how you guys feel about purple potatoes. I don't know how I feel about them. This is a purple majesty. 
but it'll be fun. It'll be a fun experiment to grow these and see what they do when I cook them. Uh, they'd be pretty mixed in with roasted vegetables. I just don't like, I can't imagine like a mashed potato that's purple or a potato salad that's purple. That would be kind of weird. Anyway, I only cut one of these. These were all pretty small, so I'm just gonna plant them whole. And then this one here is red Lasota, which we've sold this variety down at the garden center forever. I just have never grown it. They look an awful lot like the red New Orleans. Really pretty red skin, like spit shine here. I should have cleaned one of each one of these potatoes up so you could see it. Look how pretty that is. And the last one is Kennebec. This is another one that I've never grown before. So we shall see. Altogether, I have enough to plant 294 feet, which is a little bit of an overreaction for my space. I wanna do four rows that are 60 feet long. So that's 240 feet. But I did wanna plant a raised bed up in our raised bed garden with potatoes as well, because I'm treating that more as a like small space kind of kitchen garden, seeing what kind of produce we can get out of there, what kind of pro production in um, a full growing season. Although in the spot where I planted carrots, the carrots are just now starting to emerge, but there's calendula. It's the zeolites calendula that I planted last year in that spot. It just seeded itself everywhere. Kind of want to let them grow because they are so pretty. So we'll have a calendula slash carrot bed right there. All right, guys. So we're just going to close these up in the flower shed and they are going to hang out overnight. It's not going to freeze. I think the low is 42. So they'll just sit out here dry and they'll be ready to go tomorrow or the next day. You don't want to let it go too awful long, but if you cut them and then you get, you know, distracted by something the next day or if something else comes up, it's okay to wait a couple days. All right, now let's go grab the lilacs and possibly one evergreen and get those in the ground. guys now take a look at this lilac this bloom is starting to fade but right over here there's one that still looks really nice so fragrant and these stay a little smaller these are called tiny dancer they grow about four to five feet tall and three to four feet wide so that is really nice to get still get the great big bloom panicles at like the traditional look of a lilac in kind of a smaller package okay i saved the tag somewhere in here Ooh, there it is. Benjamin's playing croquet. How's it going? Good. Ooh, good job. Okay, so here's the tag. Uh, says that it's zone four through eight. And I've got three of them here because I thought it might be nice in this area. We're right at the end of the west side. You know, we just kind of shaped this flower bed kind of. It's not even like the end shape because we are gonna continue with the brick border. So you can see the brick border right up here. It's also on this side of the driveway. We're gonna be doing that. We'll continue it on. And at that point it'll have its you know, very definite line. Uh, but we've got like extra parking out here. You can see we've parked our truck over here. Uh, and this is where like our irrigation, a lot of our electrical stuff is. So we have to make sure we have access to all of that. Uh, we had a few things planted like this beautiful Chanticleer pear grows about 45 by 15 in full glorious bloom at the moment. And then Paul and I moved this lantern from behind the Hartley. We moved it out here the other day. And there's just a whole bunch of other things in here. The Gamay Blend Tulips from Color Blends, which we just kind of popped in this bed. And it's just been such a fun little spot of color. It's fun to have something in here. Except look at this. We have Rogue. Oh, how dare it be blooming in with a pink blend. We've got a hillside upright Norway spruce. This one grows 12 feet tall by only six feet wide, hardy down to negative 40. It's got a really interesting structure to it. And I actually thought that that one would be perfect to put kind of right in front of this post in between here and the tree because it gets six feet wide. It won't even touch this and there'll still be room. Um, yeah, there'll still be a couple of feet because if I plant it right here, three feet about here, we'll still have a couple feet to get around um, if we should need to do that. So I think that's the perfect evergreen for that space, but it'll still give us some really nice vertical height and a little bit of a block. And then the lilacs, I thought we would just kind of dot around in here. Oh, the fragrance. 
Mm, it's one of my favorites. All right, so let's just get these in the ground before whatever storm is coming our way arrives. We forgot that there's a box of some kind that belongs to the city, right? Water or sewer or something. Well, I didn't forget. I knew it was somewhere in here. I just didn't know exactly where. It just got mulched over yeah. like pretty, pretty good. <laughs> pretty yeah. nice thick layer of mulch yeah. there. <laughs> so obviously we can't plant anything right there. In fact, Aaron's going to work on digging it out and removing all the soil so that if anybody needs to access it, we, you know, they can and they'll know exactly where it's at. So plan B. We have a lot of spots where we can put that evergreen. So I'm not stressed about that. Uh, so I think for today, we'll just get these lilacs in. And this is going to be the perfect placement, I think, for them because we'll have enough room to do some things in front, but they're not going to be so big that they're going to get in the way of the box back there. And this is the angle that we actually see it at the most because we drive straight like this. So we see it like you know, like this. And so once that, especially the back one gets to be full size, it'll really mask that box quite a bit. And it doesn't have stickers or thorns or anything like that. So even if you have to brush by it to look at the meter, the plant's not gonna hurt you. I'm kind of bummed about that evergreen. That would have been the perfect, perfect spot for it. But I'm super happy we found it, Erin. Because like wonder if they would have come along tomorrow and they couldn't find it. They would have just like, you know, they'd have every right to bulldoze through this flower bed yeah, and look right. for it. So anyway, I think you're gonna put, maybe put a tree ring around it or something to identify where it's at. All right, let's get these lilacs in. Okay, well these look really pretty. I'm really happy with how these kind of fit in over here. Bummed about the evergreen again, but you can see here where the lid is. And then it actually has a big concrete area around it. So we're gonna get bricks and make like a little brick barrier around it and then just mulch up to the bricks so that we can still see this. And I'm thinking, so I've got hollyhocks right back here, really tall, beautiful hollyhocks, which do provide, they'll provide a really good block for all the things back here, but there's a lot going on. You know, there's another uh, something, storm sewer right here. There's an electrical box. There's, no, that's an electrical box. What is that? That's an irrigation control valve. Uh, we've got a pedestal there. So there's really not a lot I can do in this area in terms of anything that gets big, of course. So I'm thinking maybe some annual grasses. Maybe we put like three vertigo penicetum in here and they grow really fast and they're very dramatic. They look really pretty in here. So maybe that's the route we'll take. And that's where I'm gonna end today's projects. I still have to go water the greenhouse and pick up all of my stuff from this planting project. I'm going to plant that evergreen, but we'll find a new spot for it later on. But I'm really happy that the potatoes are ready to roll for us tomorrow. That's our tomorrow's project. It should be fairly easy. Uh, means that the spot is all tilled up and ready to go. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.